Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. Thank you for joining me for another episode. My name is Christelle. I'm a French indie dyer and passionate knitter. And uh, well, thank you if, you're, if it's your first time watching the podcast. Uh, it's online every Monday or so uh, at 5 p.m. together with a newsletter that I'm, that I'm sending out every Monday afternoon. And uh, usually when there's a shop update, it's on Mondays. But if you are interested in that, I strongly suggest that you subscribe to the newsletter. It's on the homepage of my website. All the links and things I'm mentioning in the podcast are linked down below. And if you are a returning viewer, thank you so much. <laughs> I hope you're doing well. Um, it's been quite of a... Um, it's, been, it's been a beautiful week. Actually, we've had beautiful weather, um, warm, sunny, not too hot. Uh, it's been wonderful. We've been having friends at home uh, for three days. We had the uh, loveliest time and we went to the beach yesterday where I had the most ridiculous sunburn ever <laughs> because it was not hot enough, you know, to be in a um, swimsuit. So I had this dress and a, a long uh, denim jacket, long sleeved, and I was knitting in the sun. It was a bit windy, so I didn't, you know, uh, realize I was burning up, but look at that. I mean, <laughs> anyway, uh, <laughs> so I feel more rested. I'm sorry about no podcast last week. Actually, I filmed it and I think it's going to be online together with this one. So there will be two for the press one podcast. Uh, but after, um, you know, uh, doing two fiber shows, two weekends in a row, plus I've been uh, feeling poorly on the second one, I was, and, and the friends, preparing everything for the friends coming over this week. Um, I've been you know, under the weather and really prioritizing, um, prioritizing. <laughs> so I updated the shop as planned, but I didn't post. I filmed the podcast, but I didn't uh, post it. Anyway, I wanted to share with you, uh, contrary to what I said last week, um, I won't be uh, putting in the shop today uh, any uh, May colorways. This will be next week, uh, just because, <laughs> what I've just said, actually. actually. Uh, so I'm dealing this by a week. Um, but I just wanted to touch base with you on a few things. Uh, the first one is this. Actually, it's a pattern of mine. It's called the Notre Dame Shawl. And it's inspired by uh, the um, Cathedral of Notre Dame in Paris. And so this is a pattern that was published in Ainet Paris a few years back that I've designed initially before I started dyeing yarn with a beautiful yarn called Maison Corlaine, which I strongly recommend. Uh, they're mainly in solid colors in absolutely gorgeous bases. I like them down below as well. And I used, I actually had a collaboration with them and I used their yarn to uh, design the, the, the first ever Notre Dame shawl. And uh, once I started dyeing, I wanted to have to knit one out of my own hand out yarns. And actually I wanted to, because I had so many beautiful projects on that pattern, some with gradients, I thought it was a good idea. And I tried my hand, I dyeing a gradient. So this is Notre Dame Shaw in the first ever gradient I dyed. And I'm not so happy with it. I mean, maybe because it's too close to my skin tone maybe, or I don't know. I think up close, the yarn is beautiful. You see, it's this technique that I love doing kind of a neutral with a lot of little speckles, but you can't see them when you're far away. Your eyes is doing this optical mixing thing and you can't see them. But if you look up close, then they reveal themselves and it's absolutely lovely to knit and to behold. But the whole color scheme, is not my jam actually. I, I dyed it. <laughs> but 
but I don't know um, yeah not my jam but still still pretty okay and then I've been wanting to uh, knit another Notre Dame shawl but with variegated yarn I know that you know consensus is that variegated yarn and texture and lace are not meant to be together but I strongly disagree I think you can hit a sweet spot where you have a lovely uh, variegated yarn or speckled yarn that matches perfectly with quite a simple lace and texture and it's actually magical when you find that sweet spot and I think Notre Dame has this potential and I've been advocating for that for quite a while now not having any um, enough time and not prioritizing that to do it myself but I've been um, you know uh, advising my clients to my customers to do that and to try it and one of one of uh, them actually surprised me at the last festival in Lenorama with this absolutely gorgeous piece which is Notre Dame knitted up with uh, variegated and semi-solid yarns and sparkle and I think it's absolutely gorgeous and I just want one for myself <laughs> absolutely so the colorway in the middle is um, Journée d'été and then you have the uh, neon, neon pink is Eleanor then you have corrupted pink and darker things and <clears throat> I'm in love with the result I mean it's it's lovely it's gorgeous it's everything I wished for the only thing that would change actually is that I would go for another variegated yarn especially in the middle and I think I'm going to knit myself one at some point I don't know when <laughs> but I think I'm going to knit myself one with only variegated yarns I think a darker yarn works well for the, for the border but I would definitely um, choose a variegated yarn for this part which is actually pretty simple and could totally work with a variegated yarn but I mean I'm so so happy with the result and I'm so proud that that customer thought it was a great idea she uh, actually went with me on that and she trusted me and the result is in my opinion absolutely beautiful so yeah <laughs> this is going to stay with me she um, actually she gifted it to me not well it, it's just I um, she's lending it to me uh, for a few fairs for a few fiber shows uh, I'm going to give it back in September but it's going to be with me for a few months so I might you know I might just need my own actually the thing is I could actually because it's four skins of yarn and it's not so I remember when I knitted it the first time it took me four weeks which for me is a record but I was on my maternity leave at home I had a lot of time on my on my hands so uh, four weeks could not be done today <laughs> really not but that client she told me two weeks it took her two weeks to knit it because some some sections like the pink section for example is pretty straightforward and it you're always knitting in the round because it's a pie shawl so yeah I might you know <laughs> I might just impulsively cast on right um, the other thing I wanted to share with you is because on the last fiber shows in Alsace I had quite a lot the same question what to knit with one skin of yarn what can I do with one skin of yarn actually I thought I would give a I would dig it a, a bit deeper on that because even if it's been a long time since I've knitted a, a shawl out of only one skin of yarn it's actually where I began uh, as a knitter and um, because when I started buying hand dyed yarn I was working full-time with two kids and uh, didn't have a lot of money for my hobby and so I was buying single skins okay absolutely no money for a sweater quantity at that time <laughs> not at all okay so I was buying only uh, single skins and uh, at the time you know the big fade thing had not exploded yet we're talking 2011 2012 
And so I was, you know, looking for patterns, beautiful patterns that I could use, where I could use only one skin of yarn. And I was much into shawls at that time. I'm still, I am. I am still into shawls, obviously. But at that time I was knitting only shawls. I, I think I had not um, took the plunge into sock knitting at that time. So I had quite a lot of, you know, patterns in my favorites um, for one skin shawls. And now it's become a thing with, uh, for example, Rorir Locatelli doing a lot of uh, One Skin Wonders uh, type of patterns. But at that time, there was nothing like that. So you had to dig a bit deeper to find those precious little beautiful chalets and, and all. And so I've put together a bundle of those kind of patterns that I, you know, took the time to curate and to uh, take inspiration from when I wanted, when I was looking for a one skin pattern. And uh, because I wanted to be able to show and because, you know, looking at all those old those patterns and uh, my old projects, I, I got the itch to cast on again. And I think I've, I've cast on for the first one I, I, I knitted actually out of my very first uh, skin of hand that yarn. Uh, it was Malabrigo at the time. And it's the Henslow uh, by Beth Kling. And I still think to this day that it's the most, one of the most beautiful shawl that I've ever knitted. And it's classic, it has a lot of flair. It's beautiful, the construction is really interesting because you start by uh, knitting this little garter stitch half uh, crescent shape. And then you bind off. Uh, with a uh, elastic bind off and then you pick up the stitches uh, because you start each row with a yarn over you pick up the stitches in the yarn overs and you need this beautiful dramatic lace border and then you have the pico and it, with that pattern I learned so much and it's a pattern that works very well with variegated yarn which is actually my job so <laughs> I guess them for another one so here's the beginning and you start with just one stitch and then you increase every row, uh, making sure you have this lovely yarn over at the beginning, in which you are going to pick up for the lace border afterwards. So it's going to be quick knit. This is one of the colorways that I did for my very first Barcelona Knits Festival two years ago. I don't remember the name. <laughs> I'm sorry if anyone knows the name. Please let me know in the comments <laughs> because I, you know, I, I noted down the recipe, but not the name. Anyway, <laughs> I'm loving it. So the lace is simple enough that it's going to be gorgeous in this heavily variegated yarn. Um, it's absolutely lovely and I'm really happy and a bit emotional actually to be, you know, able to knit again on that pattern. And it's like when I knitted that, it was in 2012, I had only two kids and I have no four. And uh, I'm kind of, you know, remembering and connecting to the person I was then. And my love and passion of yarn and knitting is intact. It has grown actually, but I'm still relating a lot to that person 12 years ago. So <clears throat> that baby knitter, baby Christelle knitter, baby Christelle baby knitter, which I don't know. I hope you catch my drift, but <laughs> anyway. Um, the last thing I wanted to share with you guys, uh, if you're into books, I'm much into books. Uh, I've just read this one, Asa Larson, En Sacrifice à Moloch. I think In Sacrifice to Moloch would be the English title. It's been definitely translated to English as well from the... Oh, Swedish. It's Swedish. It was an... A very good read. I would strongly recommend five stars out of five. Uh, I really love that uh, the uh, writer uh, gets a lot into the nitty gritty of, to, of, of everyday life. Little details that you can really relate to, like having it kind of a, a you know, always a bit damp and moldy. <laughs> Um, not tissue or thing you take to dry up the dishes. Uh, oh, I don't remember the name anyway. Uh, in your kitchen, even even if it's your kitchen is sparkly clean, uh, I would even say because you've been, you know, uh, cleaning your kitchen, you towel, <laughs> towel. 
towel. This kind of, you know, damp and slightly messy um, uh, smelling towel, okay? So that kind of little details that is really relatable to me because I'm always fighting my husband about that because it's always piling up <laughs> slightly damp towels in the kitchen and I'm always, you know, each time I'm going after him, I'm, I'm always hanging them back where they belong so that they don't actually smell bad. <laughs> so uh, strongly relatable uh, aspect of that novel. But anyway, it's a um, crime story, <clears throat> very good crime story. Don't be, you know, don't be afraid about the title. There is nothing satanic about it. Could be, could be interesting, but not, not in that particular um, book, but nothing satanic. Uh, the kind of story when you go back and forth, uh, you have flashbacks, but very well written, nothing confusi confusing at all. And I really loved the characters, very well written. And what I loved the most about the book is that the chapters are quite short. And as um, w when you're reading through the book, uh, and progressing towards the end and you know the suspense is building up especially at the end and you you are it's a page turner you have to know what's going after because everything you know the two stories are colliding at the same pace in the book and at the time the stories both stories are colliding and consequences of the one from the flashback we understand uh, how it's linking into uh, the present story Chapters are shorter and shorter and shorter and, you know, giving uh, this impression of suspense and you have to turn the page because everything is going faster and faster and faster. And uh, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it. And because <clears throat> Taylor from the... I'm going to talk a lot about her because, I mean, I've just watched a couple of podcasts and... I've taken out so much value <laughs> but since she recommended the book set it's been a game changer for me because I was <clears throat> not reading uh, physical books anymore only on my Kindle and my uh, Audible and thanks to the book set I've been able to knit and read at the same time and it was such a pleasure and uh, well so a big thank you to her about that and um, I've enjoyed this very much and you can tell it's a good book you know why because I've taken it at the library um, there is a very beautiful and gigantic library uh, 30 minutes from where I live and <clears throat> um, there is a little commentary here saying if I can translate it uh, rather a read for a very hot summer this um, frosted uh, crime novel will freshen you up will cool you down i don't know will make you feel cooler <laughs> anyway um very good book very very good book and i think it's not even the first in the series i think it's like the third or something <clears throat> i just want to read the other ones now definitely um and very good translations as well uh i mean it's translated from Swedish to French, but a uh, great job of translating. That's always the thing I'm not very happy with. Sometimes the translations are not very good. And that's why when I can, I prefer to read in the uh, uh, first language used, well, the language of the authors. I'm uh, very happy to be able to do that in English, a bit in German, but in Swedish, nope. <laughs> Okay, guys. Well, actually, you, I know it's a very good translation because you can't tell it's been translated. You, it's just like there is no translation, which is the sign of a very good translation. Anyway, that's it for this episode, guys. And next week, as promised in the previous one, I hope I left that bit. Anyway, I will talk to you about Weep Archive, which is, again, thanks to Taylor from Wool Knitting Hand Podcast. Wool no. Wool, 
wool hand, needle hands. I'm sorry, I'm, I've been telling you that wrong. I'm going to link the, I'm going to put it in the, in the, in the box below. I'm sorry about that, guys. Anyway, happy knitting, happy crafting. I'll be seeing you next Monday and take care. Bye.